Good morning everyone. I'm Relin Jean E. Labang. I was paired with Giselle Humawan and we are tasked to discuss the chapter 7 entitled Planning the Test. In this chapter, we are concerned with developing or planning the tests for assessing the attainment of educational objectives. But this time, we will base it on Bloom's taxonomy. Before that, we will first define test. So what is test? A test is a series of questions or problems that is used to determine a person's ability or understanding of something. More generally, test refers to a trial, experiment, or examination that is designed to determine the qualities or characteristics of someone or something. As a verb, test means to assess someone's knowledge or abilities to put someone or something through a trial or to try something out. The word test has several other senses as a noun and a verb. A test is a collection of questions, tasks, or problems that are designed to see if a person understands a subject or to measure their ability to do something. We have what we call a paper and pencil test. And it, can, and it can either be selected response or constructed response types. Selected response type includes true-false items, multiple-choice type items, and matching type. While in constructed response type of test includes enumeration, completion, and essays. The construction of valid test items begins with a table of specifications. And the important steps in planning for a test are, first, identifying test objectives or lesson outcomes. Second, deciding on the type of objectives test to be prepared. Third, preparing a table of specifications or TOS. And fourth, constructing the draft test items. And lastly, try out and validation. First, identifying test objectives. An objective test, if it is to be comprehensive, must cover the various levels of Bloom's taxonomy. Each objective consists of a statement of what is to be achieved, preferably by the students. For example, we want to construct a test on the topic. Subject verb, agreement in English for a grade 5 class. The following are typical objectives. First, knowledge or remembering. The students must be able to identify the subject and the verb in a given sentence. Second, comprehension or understanding. The students must be able to determine the appropriate form of a verb to be used given the subject of a sentence. Third, the application or applying. The students must be able to write sentences observing rules on subject-verb agreement. Fourth, analyze, uh, analysis or analyzing. The students must be able to break down a given sentence into its subject and predicate. Fifth, evaluation or evaluating. The students must be able to evaluate whether or not a sentence observes rules on subject-verb agreement. Synthesis or creating. The students must be able to formulate rules to be uh, followed regarding subject-verb agreement. Second, deciding on the type of objective test. The test objectives guide the kind of objective test that will be designed and constructed by the th teacher. This means aligning the test with the lesson objective or outcome. For instance, for the first four levels, we may want to construct a multiple choice type of test, while for application and judgment, we may uh, choose to give an essay test or a modified essay test. At all times, the test to be formulated must be aligned with the learning outcome. 
This is the principle of constructive alignment. Third, preparing a table of specifications or TOS. A table of specifications or TOS is a test map that guides the teacher in constructing a test. The TOS ensures that there is balance between items that test lower level thinking skills and those which test higher order thinking skills or alternatively a balance between easy and difficult items in the test. The simplest TOS consists of four columns, level of objective to be tested, statement of objective, item numbers where such an objective is being tested, and number of items and percentage out of the total for that particular objective. And a prototype table is shown in the next slide. And in the table of specifications, we see that there are five items that deal with knowledge. And these items are items 1, 3, 5, 7, 9. Similarly, from the same table, we see that five items represent analysis, namely 11, 15, 18, 21, 23. The first five levels of Bloom's taxonomy are equally represented in the test while synthesis or tested through essay is weighted equivalent to 10 points or double the weight given to any of the first four levels. The table of specifications guides the teacher in formulating the test. As we can see, the TOS also ensures that each of the objectives in the hierarchy of educational uh, objectives is well represented in the test. And as such, the resulting test that will be constructed by the teacher will be more or less comprehensive. And without the table of specifications, the tendency for the test maker is to focus too much on facts and concepts of the recall level. And constructing test items based on a TOS ensures alignment of learning outcomes and assessment tasks. Fourth, constructing the test items. The actual construction of the test items follows the TOS. As a general rule, it is advised that the actual number of items to be constructed in the draft should be double the desired number of items. For instance, if there are five recall level items to be included in the final test form, then at least 10 recall level items should be included in the draft. The subsequent test tryout and item analysis will most likely eliminate many of the constructed items in the draft or either they are too difficult, too easy, or non-discriminatory. Hence, it, it, uh, it will be necessary to construct more items than will actually be included in the final test form. Most often, however, uh, the tryout is not done due to lack of time. And lastly, the item analysis and tryout. The test drop is tried out to a group of pupils or students, and the purpose of this tryout is to determine the item characteristics through item analysis and characteristics of the test itself, validity, reliability, and practicality. Now, let's proceed to the types of paper and pencil tests. Development of paper and pencil tests requires careful planning and expertise in terms of actual test construction. The more seasoned teachers can produce true false items that can test even higher order thinking skills and not just root memory learning. Essays are easier to construct than the other types of objective tests. But, the difficulty in scoring essay examinations teachers from using this particular form of examination in actual practice. Selected response or constructed response types. Selected response type includes 
true false items, multiple choice type items, and matching type. Let's talk first about true false test. Binomial choice or alternate response tests are tests that have only two options such as true or false, right or wrong, yes or no, good or better, and check for or cross out six and so on. A student who knows nothing of the content of the examination would have 50% chance of getting the correct answer by sheer guess work. Although correction for guessing formulas exists, it is best that the teacher ensures that a true-false item is able to discriminate properly between those who know and those who are just guessing. A modified true-false test can offset the effect of guessing by requiring students to explain their answer and to disregard a correct answer if the uh, explanation is incorrect. Here are some rules of thumb in constructing true-false items. And this is the guidelines of constructing alternate response tests. Rule number one, do not give a hint inadvertently in the body of the question. Example, the Philippines gained its independence in 1898 and therefore celebrated its centennial year in 2000 blank. Obviously, the answer is false because 100 years from 1898 is not 2000 but 1998. Rule number two, avoid using the words always, never, often, in the other words that tend to be either always true or always false. Example, Christmas always falls on a Sunday because it is a Sabbath day, blank. Statements that use the word always are almost always false. A test-wise student can easily guess his way through a test like this and get high scores even if he does not know anything about the test. Rule number three, avoid long sentences as these tend to be true. Keep sentences short. Example, tests need to be valid, reliable, and useful although it would require a great amount of time and effort to ensure that test possess this test characteristics and blank. Notice that the statement is true. However, we are also not sure which part of the sentence is deemed true by the student. It is just fortunate that in this case, all parts of the sentence are true and hence the entire sentence is true. The following example illustrates that what can go wrong in long sentences. Another example, tests need to be valid, reliable, and useful since it takes very little amount of time, money, and effort to construct tests with these characteristics and blank. So the first part of the sentence is true, but the second part is debatable and may in fact be false. Thus, a true response is correct and also a false response is correct. Rule number four, avoid trick statements with some minor misleading word or spelling anomaly, misplaced phrases, etc. A wise student who does not know the subject matter may detect this strategy and thus get the answer correctly. Example, the Raven was written by Edgar Allan Poe. Allan is misspelled and the answer would be false. This is an example of a tricky but utterly useless item. Rule number five, avoid quoting verbatim from reference materials or textbooks. This practice sends the wrong signal to the students that it is necessary to memorize the textbook word for word, and thus acquisition of higher level thinking skills is not given due importance. And rule number six, 
avoid specific determiners or give away qualifiers. Students quickly learn that strongly worded statements are more likely to be false than true. For example, statements with never, no, all, or always. Moderately worded statements are more likely to be true than false. Statements that are moderately worded use many, often, sometimes, generally, frequently, or some, usually should be avoided. Executives usually suffer from hyperacidity. The statement tends to be correct, right? But the word usually leads to the answer. And rule number seven. With true or false questions, avoid a grossly disproportionate number of either true or false statements or even patterns in the occurrence of true and false statements. For, uh, for ease of correction, teachers sometimes create a pattern of true or false answers. Students will sense it and may arrive at a correct answer not because he or she really knows the answer but because he or she senses the pattern. And lastly, rule number eight, avoid double negatives. This makes test item unclear and definitely will confuse the students. For example, the, th the, uh, the changes that take place in early childhood are not unchangeable. The test item simply means the changes in early childhood are changeable and now let's proceed to multiple choice tests the multiple choice type of test offers the student with more than two options per item to choose from each item in a multiple choice test consists of two parts the stem and the options in the set of options there is a correct or best option while all the others are considered destructors. The destructors are chosen in such a way that they are attractive to those who do not know the answer or who are guessing, but at the same time have no appeal to those who actually know the answer. It is the feature of multiple choice type test that allows the teacher to test higher order thinking skills even if the options are clearly stated. As in true-false items, there are certain rules of thumb to be followed in constructing multiple choice tests. And this is the guidelines for constructing alternate response tests. First, do not use unfamiliar words, terms, and phrases. The ability of the item to discriminate or its level of difficulty should stem from the subject matter rather than from the wording of the question. Uh, example, what would be the system reliability of a computer system whose slave and peripherals are connected in parallel circuits and each one has known time to failure probability of 0.05. A student completely unfamiliar with the terms slave and peripherals may not be able to answer correctly even if he knew the subject matter of reliability. Second, do not use modifiers that are vague and whose meanings can differ from one person to the next such as much, often, usually, etc. Example, uh, much of the process of uh, photosynthesis takes place in the A, bark, B, uh, leaf, C, stem, and the qualifier much is value and can have been replaced by more specific qualifiers like 90% uh, of the phot uh, photosynthetic process, right? Or some a uh, similar phrase that would be more precise. Be quant uh, quantitative. Third, avoid complex or awkward word arrangements. Also, avoid use of 
negatives in the stem as this may add unnecessary comprehension difficulties. And for example, uh, this is an uh, example for poor. As President of the Republic of the Philippines, Corazon Cuanco Aquino would stand next to which President of the Philippine Republic subsequent to the uh, 1986 EDSA Revolution. So, to uh, make it better, who was the President of the Philippines after Corazon C. Aquino? Fourth, do not use negatives or double, uh, double negatives as such statements tend to be confusing. It is best to use simpler sentences rather than sentences that would require expertise in grammatical construction. For example, this is an example of poor sentence. Which of the following will not cause inflation in the Philippine economy? To make it better, which of the following will cause inflation in the Philippine economy? Okay. Uh, five. Each item stem should be able uh, should be as short as possible. Otherwise, you risk testing more for reading and comprehension skills. Six. The structures should be equally plausible and attractive. Example: uh, The short story. May Day's Eve was written by which Filipino author? A. Jose Garcia Villa B. Nick Joaquin C. Hinoveva Edrosa Matut D. Robert Frost E. Edgar Allan Poe And if the structures had all been Philippine authors, the value of the item would be greatly increased. In this particular instance, only the first three carry the burden of the entire item since the last two can be essentially disregarded by the students. Number seven, all multiple choice options should be grammatically consistent with the stem. Example, as compared to the authors of the 1960s, authors in the 1980s blank. A, traveling slower, B. Bigger interior, interiors C. To use less fuel D. Contain more safety measures And the option A, B, and C are obviously wrong for the language smart because when added to the stem, the sentence is grammatically wrong. D is the only option which when connected to the stem retains the grammatical accuracy of the sentence. Thus, obviously, D is the correct Answer. 8. The length, explicitness, or degree of technicality of alternatives should not be uh, the determinants of the correctness of the answer. The following is an example of this rule. Example. Uh, if the three uh, angles of two triangles are congruent, then the triangles are a. Congruent whenever one of the sides of the triangles are congruent. B. Similar. C. Equiangular and therefore must also be congruent. D. Equilateral if they are equiangular. The correct choice, B, may be obvious from its length and explicitness alone. The other choices are long and tend to explain why they must be the correct choices, forcing the students to think that they are, in fact, not, not, uh, not the correct answers. Nine, avoid stamps that reveal the answer to another item. Example, who will most strongly disagree with a progressivist who claims that the child should be taught only that which interests him and, he, and if he is not interested, wait till the child gets interested. A. Essentialist C. Progressivist B. Empiricist D. Rationalist And B. Which group will most strongly focus its teaching on the interest of the child? A. Progressivist C. Perennialist B. Essentialist D. Reconstructionist 
one may arrive at a correct answer, letter B, by looking at item A that gives the answer to B. Right? So, that is the point of the number 9. Number 10. Avoid alternatives that are synonymous with others or those that include or overlap others. Example, what causes ice to transform from solid state to liquid state? A. Change in temperature. B. Changes in pressure. C. Change in the chemical composition. D. Change in heat levels. The options A and B are essentially the same. Thus, a student who spots these identical choices would right away narrow down the field of choices to A, B, and C. The last destructor would play no significant role in increasing the value of the item. If this happens, then the item has two answers, which is not acceptable. 11. Avoid presenting sequence items in the same order as in the text. 12. Avoid use of assumed qualifiers that many examinees may not be aware of. 13. Avoid use of ans uh, unnecessary words or phrases which are not relevant to the problem at hand or unless such discriminating ability is the primary intent of the evaluation. The item's value is particularly damaged if the unnecessary material is designed to destruct or mislead. Such items test that student, uh, uh, items test the student's reading comprehension rather than knowledge of the subject matter. Uh, example, uh, the side opposite the 30 degree angle in a right triangle is equal to half the length of the hypotenuse. If the sine of a 30 degree is 0 0.5 and its hypotenuse is 5, what is the length of the side opposite the 30 degree angle? A, 2.5, B, 3.5, C, 5.5, D, 1.5. The sign of a, uh, of a 30 degree angle is really quite unnecessary since the first sentence already gives the method for finding the length of the side opposite the 30 degree angle. This is a case of a teacher who wants to make sure that no student in his class gets the wrong answer. 14. Avoid use of non-relevant sources of difficulty such as requiring a complex calculation when only knowledge of a principle is being tested. Note that in the previous example, knowledge of the sign of the 30 degree angle would have led some students to use the sign formula for calculation even if a simpler approach would have uh, sufficed. Uh, number 15. Pack the question in the stem. Here is an example of a question which has no question. Avoid it by all means. Example. The Roman Empire, A, had no central government, B, had no definite territory, C, had no, uh, had no heroes, D, had no common religion. 16. Use the none of the above option only when the K ed answer is totally correct. When choice of the best response is intended, none of the above is not appropriate since the, implica uh, the implication has already been made that the correct response may be partially inaccurate. Number 17. Note that use of all the above may allow credit for the partial knowledge. In a multiple option item, allowing only one option choice if a student only knew that two options were correct. He could then deduce the correctness of all of the above. This assumes you are allowed only one correct choice. Number 18. Better still use none of the above and all of the above 
sparingly but best not to use them at all. And lastly, having compound response choices may pur uh, purposefully increase difficulty of an item. The difficulty in a multiple choice item may be controlled by varying the homogeneity or degree of similarity of responses. Uh, the more homogeneous, the more difficult the item because they all look like the correct answer. Example, uh, less homogeneous. Thailand is located in A. Southeast Asia, B. Eastern Europe, C. South America, D. East Africa, E. Central America. More homogeneous, Thailand is located next to Laos and Cambodia, B. India and China, C. China and Malaya, D. Laos and China, E. India and Malaya. This chapter will be continued by Ms. Giselle Humawan. Thank you and God bless.